and we're live. Jessica, you're still. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Comedy Cellar Nightly. Uh, we're here as always with pro producer Mushy Mike. How can you disappear, Mike? Oh, I mean, I'm right here. All right. And it just feels weird. I don't like looking at it right now. Jessica Curson. Hi, I'm miserable. <laughs> Mateo <laughs> Lane. Hi, I just got over strep throat. Ah, Dave Juskow. Oh. Hi, everybody. And the juggernaut. <laughs> The comedy juggernaut, Yamanika Saunders. Give her, give her a round of applause, Yamanika Saunders. Yes, so, I got to tell you, Yamanika, although I just realized you took it down, you had something on Instagram, like when this all started about Italy, Harlem being 12 days behind Italy. Oh, and were, yes. And, and I took it down because uh, I got a, a proposition by a talk show to utilize that clip. And I decided that I did not want to use that clip because at the time that I was using it for fodder, um, people were trying to use it to justify black people disproportionately dying of the coronavirus. And I will not be a part of that. Well, what was the clip? What'd you say? Was that the McDonald's one? No, but um, Dave, I'm surprised you are on my Instagram like that. You know my clips like this? So, yes. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. It's so I love that clip. I offered him some pussy a couple months ago, and he took <laughs> that. I, I just want to say, Dave, you look very, all of us look very relaxed, and Dave looks like he's ready to like jump at the screen. Oh, I don't know. I, I, I oh, you know what? It's not you, it's the chair behind you. I thought your shoulders oh. were way. Yeah. I no, thought it's you the were, chair behind me. I thought you were like this. <laughs> well, I guess I was. I was leaning over. Oh, okay. I feel like sometimes when people are talking, I just want to, I want to hear intently. I'm an old man. I can't. Is there, if I go close to the screen, is that better? That's very Jewish. Yes. Even if you can hear this. Well, I'm not quite sure. No one was done talking with me, guys. Oh, so, sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway. All right. Should I go get my sunglasses too? Excuse me. I'll be. I'll be right back. Please so, don't get those sunglasses. Me. <laughs> Jessica, don't cut your hair. No. Cut it, Jessica. Cut it. <laughs> So, uh, so anyways, I wanted to play that clip because it was so funny, but now, now it's not available. And, uh, you know, I, 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 sent, I sent it to friends and they started sending it to each other. I mean, everybody I was know, It went viral. It went, that went viral. Ow. It went super viral, that, and also one that I did uh, a day before about the newscasters not having makeup artists oh. at the, that went super viral. And I yeah. didn't. I say it every morning when I watch TV, I watch the Today Show and I say out loud, the makeup artist has left the building. <laughs> oh yeah, they look that, like- Is that still online? Is that, did you take that down that, also? No, that's still online. Um, I'm gonna it, find it. Yeah. Watch the Today it, Show too. The okay. Hoda's not missed a day. No, and neither has, what's her name? No, she has, because she's in her house. Hoda's in the studio every day. It's very How do impressive. I find it, Yamanika? Um, it's called NBC. It's the Today Show. It's been on for 15 years. <laughs> no. Oh, you're talking about yeah. Yamanika. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll look it up. What's up? <laughs> what date it is. No, it's a party. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and any, so anyway, it's just, just that, that the, the um, just, well, just, just how, much, how much my friends it. loved it. What? Uh, just to recap it, it yeah. was, it started, I think when I first put it up, people initially thought that I was specifically talking about black people. I live in Harlem, which is being gentrified. So it was a bunch, it's a bunch of people out here that were black, white, and everything in between. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, I use the N word interchangeably for everyone and all kinds of races. So sometimes when I say N word, they specifically think that I am talking about black people. I know yeah, that. Me too. Me too. Me too. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've had that problem too. Uh, but you know, <laughs> if, but if you go back to March the 20th is the date it, and it's the, it's, uh, you'll see it. It's right after a post, a couple posts down from when Doesn't I- Doesn't it look like Yamanika has opened up her calendar? <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I'm not looking at porn. <laughs> Do you watch porn? I, I wouldn't say watch as much as direct. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, no, don't let it do that. Come over there. <laughs> what, what, percent, what, what percentage of women would you say are into porn? I think uh, just as much as men. 75%. I don't think so. Do you? Just as much as men. Just as much as men or 75 or 80%. Absolutely. I, every woman I know watches porn. They just are not vocal about it. 
lesbians what don't. <laughs> what, do, what do lesbians watch, Jessica? Jazz. Yeah, circles, um, <laughs> softball games, like fast pitch softball game. Like come out if they watch a fast one, yeah, yeah, pitch it. You know that kind of stuff. I I I did the other day because I only do it when I have to nap. <laughs> I do that <laughs> the too. The way I can get out of my head, so I just get that like jackhammer and just go at it. I watch it on my phone. Oh my my enthusiasm for porn is now the same like <laughs> feeling when I have to go to the bank and make a deposit. Like I just, I can't believe like I have to do it. I'm like, oh, let's just get this over with. How quickly can you do it? I mean, <laughs> minutes, less than that. It just depends on the video. I mean, I really, it's like, I literally, it feels like a chore. Mateo, you're so young. You have no idea what it used to be like before internet porn. I was masturbating to like Wilma and Betty. There was like nothing, there was, there was nothing. You yeah. took what you could get, anybody in a skirt. It was horrible. I remember I masturbated to Cheryl Teagues was on the cover of People magazine in a small inset. That's Had hilarious. that for years. And Lindsay Wagner. This how about, how about Captain How about Captain, Captain Kirk with some of those aliens? Yeah. Oh yeah, no, absolutely some of those. <laughs> Yamanika, that's your that's, that's how Yam does porn. That's just how porn. <laughs> that's 3D. <laughs> It's so <laughs> do, you, do you think that they say that porn desensitizes people uh like you know probably true yes definitely. i actually don't think that's true because like even like for topping i'm such a bad top and like if i wanted to top someone doesn't matter how much porn i watch or how much i yank on my dick i'm still like oh this is gonna end really quickly and really sadly <laughs> why sadly because i just don't i don't have like top like like yeah like i don't have that Oh, I got it. Me too. Oh, you should both coach me. Next time I, I have, I try and top. I, I don't. I try not to watch porn. Porn makes me the saddest when I'm just out of a relationship. It makes yeah. me a loser. So I, it, a long time after I'm out of a relationship, it takes for me to watch porn again. I used to call those nine seven six numbers in the nineties. Oh, oh my God, it's very desperate. Oh, you have no idea. You, you're trying out your material, Dave. <laughs> no, I am not. I am just telling you the truth. Do you know in the 90s? No, I mean, when you were calling the 976 numbers. Oh, um, yeah. um, <laughs> We'll get to it in a second, but what do you think of this? Yeah. Hi, this is it's in the, in the, candy. How can I help you? Uh, hi, one second. Um, do you, what do you think about the battle between Joan Crawford and Betty Davis? <laughs> Does this sound um, like Rodney? <laughs> mine was more like, uh, did you see this episode of Full House tonight? <laughs> What so lesson do you want to learn? <laughs> yeah, it, it was I, horrible. I, I was never that into porn. I don't know something wrong with me. Maybe you were always getting no, laid all the time. You might have I had people at the same Mateo, time. Who gets laid more than Mateo? Yeah, no one. No. I don't get laid that much. You I mean, can't put up late. pictures like you put up on the internet and not get laid. It's impossible. I know, no one, I've been with women Those for abs? 25 years and I'm attracted to you. <laughs> have you seen See? his ass? Yeah, perfect. Everybody's seen it. I, it's unbelievable. I've, I've been with him on trips where, I, yes, I've I've seen. Yeah, because we've done those gay cruises together, and I'm walking around in a you like a. Put up a picture of you in a cruise. Was that the impractical <laughs> Joker's cruise? No, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll show everybody. I'll show I have a couple pictures of me up. On, it was a gay cruise, yeah. And we did. It was for. It was a. Dominica yeah. needs to do those cruises once we're out of this horror they will, um why is slimer at the bottom of the thing that's who, would ever, slimer. who would ever go on a cruise again oh hey. look at that I yeah. know. Yeah. oh, oh my look god. At that. i know that's photoshop but it's still really good uh, why did you just <laughs> have it? oh my god and he, he even has the nerve to wear tidy whities and still look amazing i mean so unfair uh, i was with him then really Oh, oh no. lying. why do you have a picture of me? <laughs> <laughs> You're skipping over my beautiful artwork. Yeah, your though. drawings are amazing. I can't believe it. Is that freehand, Mateo? I mean, yeah, it's on the iPad Pro, but it's all done by hand. Yeah. Oh, you it's, drew all that? Yeah, it's amazing, right? Jesus it's fucking amazing. Christ, what can't you do? Right. No, you didn't know okay. those are my draw. And then, Gnome, if you go on a drawing, like, go back to Jafar for a second. Wait, I know who that, that I woman is. Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Coco. Scroll uh, right, click the right Coco thing. Pups, whatever. No, 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 go back, go back. And now, see, on the, on the right, yeah, yeah, click that. Now watch, it shows how I do it. Click play, and then this is it. It, it speeds up my process of how I do it. Wow.
That's amazing. Can you do it with a, a pen and paper too, or just? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just like, it's, it's easier now just to do on the iPad Pro because you can color, you can ink, you can do everything just straight on there. So it's not like, it's not as annoying as it used to be. Wait, hold on. Then I put my highlights in, my shadows in. Look at that. This is it, look at that's how I, this is, this is how art's made everybody. <laughs> oh, you did a little, little glow there for the eyes. How, at, what, at what age were you able to do that? I mean, you know, you, I've been drawing my whole life, but then you go to school for it. And then I worked professionally as a storyboard artist and fashion illustrator for years. Jesus Christ, Mateo, you are, look at that. Oh, Jesus. That's, that's like somebody not I, fair. That's like a Cirque du Soleil you, or something. You are hysterical. I have to tell myself it's Photoshopped. It makes you me sleep are... better at night. <laughs> Who the yeah, hell is Can you imagine oh. how much pussy you would have gotten if you looked like that? Oh, my God. I think He's about crazy. it all the time whenever I, I see his photos. that little thing on Who his underwear? Porn? You have Mateo's Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> can we back up a couple? Oh, that's the one thing he can't do. Sleep no. the woman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what? Because the women would be so disappointed. I would just oh, no. start. I would start sex by saying, "Do you like mushy dicks?" <laughs> Have you ever been with a woman? Can I ask? I mean, not sex. I had like girlfriends when I was in high school. My you're a gold star gay. What? Yeah. Yes, I'm a gold never, star gay. You've never penetrated. Yeah, that's interesting. No. Did but you but Jessica, you're not a gold star gay, are you? Me? Mm -hmm. No. No, I was with men to try and convince myself I was straight. Well, that's what I'm saying. I wonder if Mateo oh, probably here. would be with girls if he was older. You know, like it was easier, a little yeah. easier for him to, you know, come out earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. 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 No, so when I came, came out at 18, that's pretty With funny. the rocks and the hate mail and the slurs. I, I, right. it's a dance outside, Dave. We just, come on, yay, everybody. I know. When I came out, no one, even if you were like, seriously, I can't wait to go to the party. People were like, oh, he's just a little feminine. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's Italian. He's an artist. <laughs> yeah. Jessica, maybe you can explain this to me. Sure. In, in my lifetime, you know, I, I've known lots of lesbians, mm. and <laughs> yeah. oh, <so> most <laughs> of them, most of them at one time or another have either dropped it and, and all of a sudden had a boyfriend, or gone out and got drunk and fucked a guy, whatever it is. And I've and and I've known lots of gay guys. Not once, not once has any of them ever just dropped it and he had a girlfriend or just gone out and and and, and banged abroad. It's what is what no? Is, I know lot. I know lots of gay men who've had girlfriends and had sex and had wives yeah. and kids. Really? Yeah, I, but they I were know. But they, no, but they were doing that for a different reason. They were doing it to try to pass. I whatever. think honestly, I yeah. think that with women, sometimes it ends. It, it like it it doesn't become the priority of the relationship to have sex. Seriously, because it becomes more of like a companionship and affectionate, but not like sex all the time. And then some women get horny and, and a lot of people are bi. And then there's, I know some women who've never been with a man, like my ex was never has never slept with a man. But there's not many women like that. I mean, I, I um, just, maybe I'm wrong, but just in my experience, I've, I've seen that, that the gay men were much more loyal to that lifestyle than- Well, the because they can get it whenever they want it. I mean, meaning like they, ah. yeah, I just feel like they're so much more open sexually and it, it, it continues throughout the whole relationship, right, Mateo? With women, it's like you scissor for years and then it's like you end up rulering. <laughs> anyway. It's uncomfortable when it gets quiet on here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, when it looks like Dave is like, at sometimes he's so still. Dave Misty. Oh my God, Esty. Oh oh <laughs> just, just for Esty, so Yamanika, isn't it true that you were you were you were like a church girl and you were late to having sex? Is that right, or am I imagining that? Yes, this is this the episode of This Is My Life. No, it's way too prepared. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> hold on, hold on a second. We'll get back to the lesbians. SC, how are you? I miss you. Go ahead. I miss you too. I, I really know. I really, really do. Oh God, thank you, SD. Thank you for your text. Oh, you're well, very sweet. Listen, my condolences. I really. Thank you. Uh, uh, Jessica lost her father. So. Yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Six of us had to wear a mask at a seminar. Oh my God. Yeah. True. No, I, I just wanted you. to bring some humor to this, <laughs> this um, show. Right here. We had I to bring our own I felt stuff. bad that I couldn't go, you know? Yeah. The... Well, you wouldn't have been invited, but thank you so what? much. <laughs> I would have gone to a shiva. 
You would have gone to a shiva. I, I, I went to the Zoom. Why didn't you go to the Zoom funeral? No, it was, wasn't a funeral. That was a prayer with the the cantor. I went on that um, Zoom, <clears throat> and they were the people. All of a sudden, they were like, "Who's this black girl?" I came in, yeah, like a thief in the night, and it was <laughs> it was very jarring for. Yeah, everybody. you were the only the, you were the only reason why we had to get security on the Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Mateo, what are you doing with yourself? I know Jessica is busy as hell posting all those um, videos and everything. How about you? What are you doing? I'm cooking a ton of pasta. I've I've ordered an entire gym. I'm basically just missing a receptionist. And I am playing <laughs> and I'm playing video games with Yamanika every single day. Every day. That's awesome. We have, there's a game called Fortnite that Yamanika, we get on our headsets, like two loser pilots. My, son, my grandson is playing that. Oh, oh, we have to play with him. What's we, we play every day, every day, Esty. Me and, me and Yamanika, we like text each other when we're gonna play. And we play with Monroe Martin, Jermaine Fowler, like- and Marina, right? What's up? And, and Marina. And Marina. And she told because she land. told me to join in my headset. But then she told me Yamanika was crazy. So <laughs> yeah, not crazy. You know the thing about it is, I, listen, I have fallen out with everyone at some point in time during Fortnite, <laughs> but it's because I'm competitive and I like to win. I can understand and, that. You know that's the most important thing in life. If we're in a quarantine, we're already <laughs> losing. Why lose in a game? Well, then Esty's grandson should be on there because you should try to beat him. No, he should play with us. He'll be on our team. Can you imagine doing it with a kid? I, I am trying to convince him not to kill people in Minecraft and. and oh, and, yeah. and, I mean, and you're going to teach him exactly the opposite. I am. And you mean, me and Yamanik will be like, all right, you kill him. Let's go there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're getting the oh, yeah. machine guns. And it's just crazy how much. And we're very, you know, we play with some people who don't have any patience sometimes and they want to go out and gun and run. But Mateo and I will set up fort and shop and hide. We and sneak. Then for everyone at the end. <laughs> and how about you, Dave? What are you doing? I actually went. Uh... <laughs> I went to the city MD on Tuesday when they were offering the uh, the uh, antibody thing. Uh, that just happened to be the first day I went because I haven't been dizzy and headaches. And they sent me to the emergency room because they told me I was having a heart attack. What? Yeah, really? and, a, and a stroke at the same time. They read my EKG, EKGs and I told them, I said, are you positive? Because my doctors told me my EKGs are funny and they made me go to the emergency, they were gonna get me an ambulance, but I told them I could get there on my own. And then when I got there, they told me I, they called my old primary doctor and he said, oh, he's not having a heart attack. That's his, that's his way his heart works. It's weird, it's different than everyone else's. And then, uh, but they couldn't figure out what was wrong with the headaches and the dizziness. And um, then some, I got some money uh, on uh, yesterday and then the headaches and dizziness uh, cleared up. So I guess it was stress. <laughs> It's a depression. So. <laughs> so that was my week. Illness, all of us. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so, it's so, uh, they like wrote on my, uh, you know, sheet when I left the hospital, Jewy was the diagnosis. <laughs> yes. So well, I woke up, I woke up Wednesday. I was completely fine Tuesday. And I woke up Wednesday with 101 fever. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't move. And my, I couldn't swallow, my throat hurt so much. And so I must have messaged my doctor, my symptoms. I was like, my throat really hurts. It's really red, it hurts. You have COVID-19. I'm like, no, I don't have COVID-19. Like, you need to get tested, COVID-19. I, I don't have COVID-19. So I went to the city MD also, got the antibody test and she looked at my doctor and goes, oh, you have strep throat. And I was like, that, oh, thank God. And then she's like, how did you get strep throat in quarantine? I was like, I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. And then if it was a family guy, they cut back to you like blowing some guy. <laughs> like, sorry, I, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I just, like, I don't know how it happened, but then it's <laughs> don't you get I have no idea. Sorry. What what do you get from other people. I, I must have gone at the grocery store or something, because that's the only place that I go to is the mm -hmm. grocery store. Right. So that's where I think that's where everybody's 
catching everything, you know, the grocery store, what can you do? That's why I think they should probably just let people out. They should just let people out because we all have to go to the grocery store. I think everybody's either going to catch it, you know, and they either survive or they don't. I don't think there's staying in isn't going to help anymore. I don't think. What do you think? I mean, I'm not going outside because I'm black. <laughs> you know what? That were so thin, Yamanika. Hmm? Oh, I disagree. Are you sure that <laughs> that's the reason you're not going out? Think, analyze it. Analyze it. This is a Scooby Doo mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm enjoying this. I went outside. <laughs> I had to go outside uh, and I was terrified, really. I don't, you know, I haven't been outside. I go out at night when no one's outside because I don't want to get on the elevator. I've been in a couple of, you know, bad conversations with people telling them to get off the elevator and not to be on the elevator with me. So I just prefer to go out at night when people are not moving so much. I had to go out once because my cat was sick. I had to take him to the vet. I had to rent a zip car. I had to clean that car completely. It took me like half an hour. I had to go pick him up. And then since I had the car, I went grocery shopping. And I went to this grocery store, which they were doing the distancing outside. But as soon as you got into the grocery store, everybody was like right on top of each other. And it yeah. was hard. At and the it, cashier, at the cashier, everybody's on top. There, it's, oh, where yeah. I am, there's two they cashiers at tape. once. They have red tape and they say, everyone has to stand here and you have to stand there and you have to stand there. And no, but at the, the, the one I go to, there's two cashiers right on top of each other. Oh, so back you're, to back. There is no social distance back well, to back. Well, they're in a relationship. Back to back and side <laughs> to side as well. They're in a relationship. Well, when I went to the grocery store, I had I almost got arrested. I um, there was a woman in front of me. <laughs> Look at Esty. <laughs> there was a woman in front of me. She was already obnoxious. She put her snot rag down Ew. on the conveyor belt. Oh. And I looked up and I said, and I have the mat, you know, you like, you can't cuss people out with the mat. You got to pull the mask down and cuss them out. <laughs> Cause they can't hear you. I had the mat, yeah. I was like, is that your fucking right? <laughs> and I said, I said, is it, and I, when I tell you, and the, my, the place I was at, they were like, oh my God, they were so nervous. They were like, mommy, mommy, please come down, come down. But I was so mad for the cashier because the woman already has a face guard down. This lady puts her snot rag on the conveyor belt doesn't pick it up. First of all, it doesn't be there. And then I'm like, now this woman, you, and I told, and the woman was going to go pick it up. I said, don't fucking pick that up. I said, bitch, if you don't pick up your fucking snot rag, I am going to jump down your fucking throat. And I mean, my entire body is going to go into your fucking throat. I cannot believe you did that during this time. This woman's an essential work. I mean, it was a whole thing. It's on video. I asked him to give me a tape because I need a five video, but it was crazy like people are not considerate and people don't consider that's why i don't want to go outside also because i don't want to have to be the one telling people stay six feet don't come near me don't put anything down that's nasty don't be rude don't yeah. you know it's too much yeah when you went to the vet did they let you in or did you have to wait outside and give your kid i had to drop them up. yeah because i was nervous they <laughs> First of all, I'm very pushy as a mom. A new puppy that no. I, I did. I dropped him down, right? Because they said no contact. But then the girl wasn't coming out fast enough. And I was, because he gets nervous. He has heart palpitations. And so I said, you got to come out. And she goes, what? And I go knocking on the door. And she goes, what? And then so I opened up the door. <laughs> yeah. I opened up the door and I went inside. I'm going to show you my babies. Wait, oh. look at this. Look at them. Aww. Aww. This is this is Brooklyn. He was sick. He wasn't feeling well. And this is Richard Pryor. <laughs> I don't know where my kids are. Yeah, I was just gonna say, <laughs> was Jessica, what's it like with the kids, the wife, and not on the road? And it's very hard. Yeah. But I'm we're getting through it. I get up in the morning with all three of them and give them breakfast. And oh my God, SD, the twins are 10 and a half months already. Crazy. Mm -hmm. So they're starting to stand and walk, try to walk, it's insane. And then um, and then I just don't see them until nighttime. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Where, where are they? <laughs> I'm in my, look at this, I'm in my closet. <laughs> so this is where- <laughs> It looks comfortable though. 
I'm back in my closet. <laughs> and this is where I have space. It's a huge walk-in closet. So I can be be in here and be loud. And it's very challenging to not, because I'm so used to being away. And now being home every day is, it's a lot, but it's it's getting easier because we, we make a plan every day. Yeah. Danielle you know, Rachel's also a therapist, so she has clients on the phone. It's insane. Rachel uh, Feinstein is giving birth in like 18 days. Oh my God. Yeah. I need to call her. She, I need to. Yeah, I called her the day before she was moved. She moved also. Yeah. Like, yeah, she had to move. There was no choice. They need the extra room. So, you well, know, nobody Gina would normally Brion do it. Gina also was moving in the midst of her pregnancy. Like Gina's pregnant. Rachel's pregnant. Right. I'm pregnant. <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> I, you are pregnant. <laughs> I wish. I want a baby. I need to steal babies. No. Time. Don't do it. I want a baby. I'm out of a relationship. I just need the baby. I, I don't have the man anymore. I need the baby. I need something to hold other than the cat. Esty, what do you have to say about that? You don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. If Rachel was single, this would be like a horrible time to be pregnant. Horrible. You know, thank God. So she... meanwhile, Rachel drove out to my house. This was the nicest thing and brought <laughs> Shiva stuff, brought a, a pie and a, and a ala. And you should see what she was going to bring until I told her what to bring. <laughs> How much do you think it was you, you think they'll want to hang out for or that she wanted to get out of the house? Well, no, I, I, think, I, think she, I think she just wanted to drive to Long Island because it's so beautiful here. Um, it's fun. It must be fun being in the car. I'm, I'm dying to take a drive somewhere. Oh, jealous of people that drive places. Yeah, that is. Oh. I did. I was just in my car. It does help to even go get gas. Because it seems like it's not crowded or anything, right? No, and you could be, be free, so like the fun. windows open, you could yeah. play music. And... Well, wait, Dave, you don't have COVID, right? You don't have it? I, I don't know. I don't. I figured I might have had it in March, but as far as I know, I don't have it. Because I can get a zip car. I can pick you up. We go somewhere. Oh, no, I have a car. I have a car in the city. Well, I just have- car, pick me up! <laughs> I have nowhere to go, but I would. Why are you so quiet? Me? No. Oh no. Yeah. I'm. I, I. I'm depressed. You guys talk. You guys are doing great without me. I, Wait. I, what, what's the matter? What's the matter? Uh, well, uh, I. I used to have. I used to be on top of the world. I used to have a comedy club. I used to have an income. <laughs> you still have an income and. In I used to have a life. I used to play in a band. I. I used to be young. I used to. <laughs> what, 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 what? What? What's the matter? It's good. It's, I know everybody like you. It's gonna. We're all like. Anytime I'm the voice of reason and positivity, something's wrong. But I think that, you know, everything will come back. People are just adjusting. It's a little, you know, people getting a little freaked out. And then people have to come back to the world. We can't continue to be isolated or we'll figure out how to adjust and make stand up happen in, in this time. Yeah, know? and the one thing you don't have to worry about is you have the best comedy club in the country. So that will yeah. open first. I had, had. You, so you have had it. it. Still have. Yeah, you still have it. Can I ask a very ignorant question, but like, do we have any idea when we're thinking about like even slow starting to come back or? Say, oh, he hates that question. You just depressed him. Even. That's like the worst oh, question ever. Oh, officially, <laughs> oh, God. officially, officially uh, the clubs and restaurants didn't get the green light yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once we get the green light, you know, although no, I'm, I'm hearing more and more about Vegas in June. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah, that mayor, she wants to open everything right back up. Now I will perform there. You can book me now, Esty. I just need a um I need a face guard up on the stage. <laughs> I need one of those weird Al Yankovic face masks. I'll be in there. Oh, that's Gallagher. Oh, it's Gallagher. <laughs> sorry. sorry. Okay, I, I think, Boomer. I think everybody's gonna be in masks. Um that would be horrible. I don't know. I'm so pessimistic. An audience of full of people in masks would be the worst what thing. What if we like... have to wear masks? Her... <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand, people really want comedy. You know, people want... I've seen my page grow. Because I was, like, depressed, too. I lost a bunch of gigs until the rest of the year. Like, I lost thousands of dollars. I have no Man. idea where I'm going to get them. You know, and p fortunately for some of us, we don't just do stand-up. We also do television. But people don't even know when that's coming back. But I, I think that there is a way 
you know, through trial and error to figure out how we can give content and stand up to people um, virtually until we can get, and you know, you do have a very reputable club that has so much access to so many talented people that a lot of other places don't have access to. I just think it's a trial and error thing and we have to figure it out because people do want to see stand up. People do want to see comedy. They don't want to keep, I mean, the news- Listen, if anything, no one can figure things out. Huh? That's right. No one, if anybody can figure it out, no one oh, can. Yeah. I don't know. He's got a Janet Jackson remember the time background. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the time? That's with Eddie Murphy in the video, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. You'll be fine, Noam. You will. We'll all be fine. Essie, I, I bet you by July. I bet you by, what happened? I said, tell Esty, no matter what, keep booking me. I don't care who drives. I'm taking this <laughs> I don't care who drives. Booking all of you. Except, well, I, you, except you, Dave. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to oh. have dinner with you. You are oh. more than entertaining. Oh, thank you. You I really are. You are. Yeah, he is. Oh, my God, he's funny. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. I bet you by July. July 1st, we're gonna, it's going to feel remarkably we'll have a way better sense of how this is all gonna look. And I also think people won't, I don't think you have to wear masks because I would think people that are coming to a club like that aren't afraid. And I don't think they'll feel like they have to wear masks inside I, because why would you no, go to a club like that if you no, have any kind of inkling? They can, they can have see-through masks. How about see-through masks? I thought about like that like today. Cut the why don't they do yeah. see-through masks? They can just wear a dental dam. <laughs> I saw a guy using a maxi pad. Ew. I saw a guy using a jock strap. Ew, what is the You know what? With People you? are that's, sick. That's that wasn't that wasn't for COVID, was it, Mateo? I mean, like you see. Well <laughs> <laughs> that's how he got the strap. <laughs> so what else? What do you guys think about the Tara Reed thing? Just it just just as we're talking, two more people uh corroborated her story now. I that's think up it's to like seven. Strange time to come out with it. I, I'm a little ignorant. I actually don't quite, I thought it was Tara Reed, the actress at first. So did I. I. And, th and that would, I would have been okay <laughs> yeah, with. I would have, that would have made sense. Her American kidding. Pie time. These are the uh, new masks we're going to wear. <laughs> oh, those are cool. Well, well, uh, correction. We don't need to cover eyes, the mouth. The mouth. Oh, I don't know. Have you met Natterman? There you go. Here we go. Now, <laughs> now you are in. Is anyone celebrating anything? Hey, I got to What's up with this Tara Reid thing? Tell me. That that she, there's a woman named Tara Reid who accused Joe Biden of uh, penetrating her with his fingers without consent. Well, how did he get his fingers next to her puss? Yeah. Oh, well, no. How does that even work? She, she apparently apparently the accusation is he pushed her up against the wall. When they were alone in the office or something like that. Oh, you know, like, yikes! Yeah, but well, you were allowed to do that in the eighties, so oh. I don't know what the big deal is. I, what? I mean, you were. But you know, like here's the thing, okay? Because on the one side, as a woman, you have to go. I have to stand with women. I have to stand with the woman. I have to support her, and she's my sister, and all that jazz, right? I don't feel that way. But then on the, I'm just saying, like perspective-wise, as a woman, that's what we're supposed to say. But then the other thing is like, well, um, it does seem sort of crazy that this is the time in which now you want to come out with something so sensational. And there's, it has, it's not like Me Too started yesterday, and there's been a whole ramp up and a lamp up to that. And mm -hmm. at this point in time. I, it's hard for me to believe that anything that Joe Biden would have done that Donald Trump hadn't done the same or not worse. Well, oh, that's for sure. Right? That's, not, that's not what the issue, but yeah, Trump definitely. But it is it is odd timing, and it's like why is it? I not, mean, listen, hold on, Dave. Just let me yeah. let me just uh, say, Anita Hill came out just when Clarence Thomas was being confirmed. Uh, 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 Christine Blasey Ford came out just when Kavanaugh was being confirmed. Uh, um, Juanita Broderick came out while Clinton was running for election. I mean, uh, um, and Paula Jones, these things always come out right when the, the candidate- right I was talking more about, I would I would think if I was her, I would be like, people don't want to hear about this now. That, that because of but the but virus here, thing, that's a, all I was saying. Thing. Like seven people now have said 
that she told them the story. Some people have said that they told them, she told them the whole story about the, the penetration and all that. And some people say that she just told them about a horrible experience she had being harassed. But seven people over the last 25 years have said that she told them this story. Mm -hmm. Do you have so seven? Let, let, do you so have he, seven friends? So he should get away with it, just like Trump and Kavanaugh and everyone else. Let him get away with it. One thing at a time. Let's just decide whether it's true or not. Do you have? Do you have even two friends, let alone seven friends, who would back you up if you say, "Listen, I'm going to tell a fucking lie to bring down Just Gal," and and if they ask what? you, and the, if the reporters call you, I want them you to, I want you to tell them it's true. Just Gal raped me. I mean. It's so absurd to think that anybody has friends, let alone seven friends who would do that for them. Yeah, no, I know. people it was, do that It's all been the absurd time. every when time. We about, when we talk about things that have happened throughout history, people are constantly backing up people to tell stories. You know how many people no. collaborate, corroborate it with the story of Emmett Till, and then she comes out at the towards her life that she lied and he never did that? People are constantly backing up things that are a part of their own well, special. Well, Yamanika, let me ask you, let me ask you, do you, could you call up that number of people now and get them to back you up on a lie to, to, to say I raped you? Well, I'm a person that it wouldn't do anything like that and, ha and has certain No, but you say, like, no, I, what I'm I, saying is my group of people, because I wouldn't do that, would not be up. people that could do that. But if I was a person that could get involved in shit like that, I'm sure I could find seven or eight dishonest people to say, back up some well, bullshit. Why would they do that? With, with Emmett Till, with Emmett Till, you understand you have, you're living in an ultra racist time where this mattered to people, but these people actually most but, of them could be Biden voters. So, why, but, but but why? But but what's the like? Meaning, they they all get away with it. Whoever got in trouble, so who cares? Well, all right then. And how's it going to affect them anyway? Because you're yes, either going to vote for then, Trump then, then, or him, and then was that your attitude? They during, both have done that. Was that your attitude during Kavanaugh? Who cares? Um, at some no, point, yeah. I mean, not who cares, but I knew he'd get away with it. I knew he'd I get away care. with it. I knew Trump would get away with it. I know Biden happened. will get away so, with so it. So let me tell you what. Let me tell you what bothers me. I've said this before on the show. I, listen, uh -huh. I think it's unfair to bring up. I think it's unfair to bring up something 25 years ago to anybody, anybody. But it's not lost on me, and I get mad every time I think about it. That the same people who were saying essentially what you're saying now—it doesn't matter who cares, blah blah blah—were threatening me and my life and my children's life and threatening the comedy seller simply because we let you Louis C.K. going on. The very same people are saying, come on now, you know, shit happens, whatever. I'm still gonna vote. Fine, that's your life. You don't you don't care about it. I don't think you need to care about it. You wanna vote for him? Absolutely you should vote for him if you agree with his policies. But then why would these are the same people who were attacking me, tried to ruin me. These fucking well, hypocrites. I would never that's what do bothers that. me. About. So what does that have to do with I'm me? Not saying you would. I would I'm saying this is why this is why this issue matters to me. Because I want them to I want them to drive a stake through the heart of these fucking hypocrites who pretend to care about this, but they really only care about it when it's somebody they want to go after, and they'll look the other way whenever it's suits exactly. Them. That's what well, all I the Trump people are doing now to Biden. They all do it. All of them. You know what? For Today, it was that- Oh, that's from Yamanika. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> they said that they had an investigation and there is no basis to, to her. That she complained about harassment, not assault. Yes, that's what no, I know. No, no, they're, they're getting, Essie, they're getting everything wrong. I know everything about this case. She always yeah, said- Yeah, but they said it in the news, I'm telling no, you. No, no, it's wrong. It's, you're, uh, fake news, Esty, fake news, I guarantee you. She, I, I, she oh, said, the fake news term comes in, oh boy. I'm, wait, I'm, wait. Being, I'm being facetious. Yeah. I guarantee you that story is not true. But let me say, let, she let me always just say said, this. Let's, let's talk about the underlying, the basis of everything, right? And And how we get to this sort of tit for tat situation. You know, one of the so things that I think as a, as a person of color, right, one of the things I think our biggest problem is, is people of color, especially black people who have seen so many egregious errors done to us in a country that constantly turns its back and acts as, I mean, even this whole COVID thing, like the second everybody discovered that this black people were twice or 10 times likely than anybody else to die or contract of it. Now all of a sudden white people are like, well, let's go outside, let's go to the beach, it's a nigga's disease. So then we have people who like, when as soon as it doesn't belong to them, they volley it wherever it needs to go. So that's part of some part of like this American human nature. And I don't think, 
you know, for the people that attacked you, and, and I'm sorry that that happened, and we all experienced watching you go through that, and that's a shame, but it, there weren't that many liberals, at, and as far as I know, especially maybe as comedians, who were also going, fuck Louis C.K. I wasn't doing that, and I'm somebody who has said, fuck Donald Trump. I'm not, I'm a, I'm- Yeah, me too. A that's exactly no the same with me. Uh, you know, I would I say it, it, it's, it's like the same, What? it's like the same thing. <laughs> It's like the same thing when we hated Mariah after Glitter and then <laughs> left it her again with emancipation of Mimi. You know I mean? It's like people just don't know how to make up their minds. We want to zoom this conversation out beyond what Yamanika and Jessica happen to think and, and understand we're talking about big currents within the nation, even if we may all be reasonable. But I'm interested, Yamanika, I, respectfully, do you really think that people started going out to the beach because they heard it was a black people's disease? When we knew nothing about the coronavirus and we only thought it affected people who were old or had weak immune systems, you saw a lot of young people going, I can go and do spring break because I'm not old and it's just affected. And then as soon as young people started dying of it, it was like, oh my God, everybody. And then it became this really big panic because the things we said, the people that were supposed to die from it and it wasn't supposed to exclude other people, it wasn't. So everybody felt this vulnerability across the board that I could die and I could be affected. And then we watched our president, Dr. Fauci, we watched a bunch of people call, you know, go in front of the press conference and then say, well, you know, we're seeing that black and brown people are disproportionately contracting the, the uh, coronavirus. One in two people that contract the coronavirus are African-American. One in two people that die of the coronavirus are African-American. Subsequently, and I marked it down to the days, four days later, we had this big uprising about people wanting to go back outside and that COVID wasn't a thing. And it's not so much that it's not COVID isn't a thing. There are absolutely white people that are thinking it's not their problem. It's not a problem that is affecting them as much. And black people know very well that we can't just run outside. So when I tell you I don't go outside because I'm black, I mean that because there are a number of reasons why we are contracting it and why we are dying from it. And I don't have the luxury to play games with my life, not in America. And that's, that's just facts. So, you know, yeah. I, I, we, we talk across the board, like p politics is all fucked up. I'm, I'm a Democrat or a liberal because I have no choice. But do I think Democrats or liberals are for me as much as Republicans? No, I think they all suck, right? I, I think they all say whatever the fuck they want when we go back down to this Joe Biden situation, it's like, if he did rape this girl or he did something against this woman's will, he should absolutely be punished for it. But where I draw the line is, I'm not as, I, before we start running after him, like he's the first case on the docket, if we're gonna run after him, we gotta go back and look at all these other people that we've just ignored. You can't be like this victim seven, and then we haven't done anything for, to, to the people one through six. It doesn't make any sense. That's a really good point. That's what uh, I was saying before, but you said it better, I think. How hot is that new press secretary? Oh. So just, oh, God, just, just, just looking at the stats, just so, just so we, so that was like to make sure we, we got our, our everything straight. Yes. Uh, we get 22% uh, of New York City residents are black and 28% of the fatalities are, are, are black. Uh, but I've, I've heard worse stats in other cities where blacks were twice as likely uh, to get it than white people. But I, I always presume that's because of, um, those statistics uh, are horrible. I don't even know. I only know two people that have gotten tested. Because they because they li were living um, more more likely to live in 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 dense urban areas and more likely to be doing um, jobs uh, that were higher risk, hospitals or whatever it is. And um, you know what, Noam, and that's why I took the video not, not down. And I'm glad we got. I'm glad we got to this. And this is why I took the video down. When I did that video, it was fresh off the heels of coming back from uh, Tennessee doing a gig, and we hadn't really gone into lockdown. And I live, uh, Pat Brown is one of my neighbors that lives in, in, uh, across in the building. And we went out to go grocery shopping, and she wanted to go to the buffet. And then I was just like, look how many people are roller skating and doing all this shit. Now, when <laughs> I was talking about that, I'm talking about, like, I'm seeing black people, white people. Again, um, Harlem is gentrified. 
my building, I moved in here four years ago, is probably 90% black. It is now probably uh, 65% black. So when I, when I put that up and it was all in fun and it was all in jest and jokes, and then I get called from a television uh, show that I'm not gonna say, cause I, I don't have anything against them per se. And they wanted to use that content that I had put out just for fun and funny and was talking about everyone. And they wanted to let that be the example of why black people are disproportionately dying of um, the coronavirus. And I have spoken uh, very clearly about this to people and why I'm very specific about the jokes that I do when it comes to coronavirus and, the, and this need to uh, victim blame black people for disproportionately dying. It makes no sense because we're 12 or 13% of the population you understand? And a large majority of the population that doesn't consist of us is also struggling and suffering. There are poor people across the board. So it would only go to say that you would see just as many white people who are poor and downtrodden as there are many dying the same proportion as black people. Yeah. Again, my, my, yes. I was going to say, was that, as, as you explained it, uh, I think you were absolutely right to take it down. I don't blame you at all. I just want to let you know that the the friends that I had who saw it, the, their favorite part was when you said, who shall remain nameless, Pat Brown. That yeah, was, that was the best, part. right? <laughs> that was, that the, was the whole thing part. was funny. My friends loved it too. And over again. Just so, so no, despite- No, it was fun. The, I love it. It was fun. It was fun. It was funny. I loved it. And if not for the, I just didn't want them to strip it and take it out of context. No, when now I, it all makes sense. I didn't think of it. I would never I, thought of it that way. It, yeah, I would have never, because I don't want them to use that. And then black people looking at me like, I, I'm just out here cooning it up. But I, I would have never done it. It was all in fun and it wasn't fun anymore. So, I mean, it'll resurface once we get beyond, it's not gone forever, but I don't want to, because yes, there are disproportionate, uh, there are black people who are uh, economically and socially disenfranchised, that is true. But the narrative is not, that's not every black person. And they don't talk about the black people who are dying who are not socially and economically disenfranchised. And I think we gotta start changing the narrative about that. I grew up in an upper middle class family. I went to private college, I went to private school. We had a housekeeper. You understand? I didn't grow up in poverty and disenfranchisement. I don't know who my father, I mean, I know who my father is. I don't fuck with him because I don't like him, but I, he there, you understand? <laughs> like I didn't grow up like, oh daddy, my, you know, the shit. So when, daddy, when you we hear talk me? about, Yes. yes. When we talk about, and I think, Noam, you know what, honestly, you and I can have a, a special one-on-one -on -one sort of live, because this starts to get deep, and I think you and I can talk about these things, and we kind of maybe want to make it light and funny here, but that, just just to sum it up, that's why I did it. Yeah. Well, and, and I, so I saw it, what I, I would say that, uh, because being Jewish, I, I, it's not the same situation, but I understand the I think I understand the emotion of it. What you, you don't want, you may want to have some fun with your own people or whatever it is. You don't want you, your video to be weaponized against your own people by someone who is, go, uh, who, someone who doesn't care about your people, essentially, who finds it entertaining. That's or right, it's difficult wants to for make Jessica, want, wants to, being Jewish and gay, a, it must be very difficult. <laughs> but, and, and, that, and that sounds like, <laughs> sounds like what they were trying to do. They were trying to use your video uh, as essentially it turned into a club against to, to be I, I just want to let everybody know while that was going on, someone on Grinder asked if they could smell my sweaty briefs. <laughs> you must get so, a lot of those though. I gotta get on Grinder. Did you say yes? Of course. I, my literal response was I said, girl, calm down, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> probably get money. You probably get money for that. It's a good way to make money at this point. I mean, I might have to start selling my out. Yeah. in their early hundreds. I think it's going to be. It's my new. It's my new business. Why not? You just like tidy so whiteies. The they don't We're look talking about really important stuff too. <laughs> I've been. I switched over to Tommy John underwear. That's like thirty-seven dollars a pair, but it's good for the uh, the boys. <laughs> The tidy whities we weren't cutting. Are we calling them boys now or are we calling them grown men? Well, I uh, I didn't know what to say. I was, <laughs> they're so <You're> gross. <laughs> no, I can't. I don't. They're, they're like, they're boxer briefs. Yeah. Oh. I don't like boxer briefs. I have too many pairs of them, but I don't like them. Yeah, but you'd look amazing. And I mean, uh, you, you should try. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so odd. Uh, <laughs> hey, what do you look like without a mustache? That's a good question. Um, 
I, I don't know, actually. I haven't seen myself without a mustache since I was 17. A mustache wow. is such a bold statement. You know, it's not like a beard. It's like a mustache is very, uh, you know. Liberate. Well, well people, are, people, are, people don't have uh, bland opinions about mustaches. People either hate them or they like them. You know, a lot of people are, are on the anti-mustache team. Yeah. Um, Most people either hate that's... or like me. But it kind of goes with my personality, I think. My aunt uh, married my aunt married a guy who had a mustache, and uh, she goes, "Oh, you'll you're gonna like it. It's very interesting kissing a man with a mustache." It was, a, but, but you don't have like a lot of people grow mustaches because they have a cleft palate, or because they have because they they're, they're covering something, or whatever. It is. You, you just wear it for fashion, correct? Wait, Essie, what did you say? What Essie? I said I don't like facial hair or mustaches in general. But on you, I don't even pay attention that it's yeah. a mustache. Yeah. Well, that's the way we know him. Yeah, it's yeah. you. It's Mateo. It's going to be really weird without it. Mm -hmm. I know, I look like a Mario character. Yeah, you'd be like when Tom Selleck shaved his and everybody got confused. Well, beards <laughs> are really big in and now, like they're, they have all these pages about beard things. <laughs> wow, what the uh, hell? Oh, no. <laughs> what yes. is going on? <laughs> Now imagine him without his mustache. He, he, he would just wouldn't look right. Why is my father on the screen behind you? <laughs> Wait, Jessica, I have a question. What is, does Vivian like or not like mustaches? She doesn't care if you have money. <laughs> like my wife. Wait, Jessica's doing all these videos where she's Vivian. She's her Jew like old Jewish woman character. But then you're on these Zooms with like other families, like because what people do they are think of you? because I'm bom I bombed twelve I Zoom bombed twelve families on Passover around the around the United States and Canada. You know what, you Jessica? Did? I was thinking about you. They're cracking down on that. You know that you heard? I know. Yeah, but this is how a did thing you where do it? Because I people set up their family. It's a prank. They, oh, they're, that's they so funny. I wish then, I had known. Would have done yeah, that. It was what are they down on? All 12 families let, let me stay on, and I had a Haggadah and the whole thing, and I did the prayers with them. Wow, <laughs> that's amazing. I had, I had we longer videos of it. And they all were like, well, Vivian, do you want to read? <laughs> like, it was so <laughs> amazing. It made me love our people even more. It was like not, no one got mean or tense. It was so crazy. They were all like, join our family. It was so funny. Aww. I'm like, I'm in a uh, tone. What, what are they cracking down on? I don't understand. They're cracking down on you doing your character? Because, no, uh, no, no. People that are um, mm. uh, breaking into Zoom and, and you know, either oh, you can break into a Zoom? Yeah, how'd you think I got in here? <laughs> and so they, who booked just out? Yeah, exactly. I, I knew somebody was going to say it. I beat everybody to it. Zoom is, is really cracking down on that. Uh, no, but that, those are people. But I, I don't think Jessica means that she actually hacked uh, her way into no, it. Anybody. No, someone gave you know, it. Give her the information. Yeah, they give her the information yeah. to do. That's funny. How do you, do you said you did twelve? How did you even? And then you stayed with them for the same. How did you have time? No, I stayed for like 10 minutes with each one, but it was, they were all welcoming oh, okay. and laughing and it was, it was fun. No, it was really No, funny. I was thinking, I was watching the Ten Commandments uh, two weeks ago and I was thinking to myself, if Moses is such a douchebag, if he had actually remained the Prince of Egypt, none of this would have happened. If he had just kind of freed the slaves slowly one at a time as the Prince of Egypt, instead of going into slavery, but oh, I want to be one of them. We could have, none of this would have happened. That's, that's absolutely, that's, that's brilliant, Dave. Thank you. Yeah. It's bothering me for two weeks. <laughs> quarantine, quarantine thoughts. What we, what did we learn from this? Dave's learned that if Moses- so Why are we celebrating this tonight? <laughs> you, you go to shul, don't you? Why don't you bring, ask the rabbi? I, I can't- Wait, isn't the 10 commandments with Yul Brenner? Yes. Yes. It's, and, <laughs> I said, isn't it kind of commandment with Yul Brenner? Yeah, yeah well, it is. You'll, you'll, and at every like gay icon, Yul Brenner, Vincent Price. Uh, yeah. Yul Brenner was gay? No, but he was like, you know, you know the gays hey, like gay him. icon. Yeah. He was, oh my God, he was a heart trap. He was wonderful. 
He, he looked amazing. Did you ever see him in the King and I? I saw him yeah. in the King and I. Yeah. Uh, I, I hated. I hated the son in the King and I. He's like mother. Like every scene, <laughs> just a boob, an unlikable character, and the mo oh, like, mother. I shall never be afraid again. I'm like, oh, shut up and go away, Louis. You're so annoying. Hated oh, material. So I um I wanted to take the time to say, uh, and we talked about this when we taped um, the virtual sit down for this week at the cellar is it's really good to just sit and talk with you guys hi. and um, oh my baby. Oh, my baby. Oh, my baby. That's my favorite kind of dog. Is that a Shibu Emu? Hi. Wait, go ahead, Yamanika, finish your thought. Finish oh, your sorry. Thought. I'm sorry, I get the, I'm such an animal person distracted by animals. Um, and we just talked about like, you know, just the environment and the vibe. So beautiful, the vibe, you know, at the cellar, we really miss it and we can't wait to get back just to sit down. Not even just, you know, obviously being on stage, but going in and there's so many different tables and groups of people and comics and everybody's having a conversation and people are talking about ideas or they're just, you know, having friendships. We've mourned people there. We've celebrated people there. We've bonded, we've had arguments and debates and loves and fights and affairs and, you know, murder plans. And it's just, it was <laughs> such a great environment. And we can't wait to get back to it, Gnome. And, you know, like yeah, so many Monica, people- that's why the bond, the bond that we have between all of us- Yeah. Is Even just now, any also other the comedy club. club. I can't tell yeah, you how always like honored I am that I am, I consider yeah. you guys my family more than my actual family. Well, I actually invited just got a Passover dinner one year and then he disinvited, but anyway, go ahead, go ahead. Then he, he, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, very, I, yeah, that's very, very, very uh, sweet of you. You make me cry. That was really nice. Uh, yeah, hopefully we all will be back. Um, I think everybody feels similar, you know, Noam. I think you know that, you know, we love the yeah. seller. I mean, yeah. I, I don't, I, I, I don't take it. Um, I hope this comes out the right way. I don't take it so much as a compliment of me. I think we're, we're all kind of, it, it happens on its own in a way, and, we're, and it's it's not that much guided by anybody. It just we do. I think I think if, if to my to the extent that I'm responsible for it, is I do a good job of not fucking it up more than um, doing anything else. Because you know, you guys see me. I don't need sometimes I just leave everybody alone. You know, we just just make sure that 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 the, the waitresses get you your your food and stuff. But however it happened, I think we're all very lucky to be part of it, and you know, hopefully it'll be back. So. Well, you also have, you know, like unlike some other comedy owners, you also have respect for the comics, like deep respect, and it's no, and people realize that. <laughs> oh, it's it's true. But it's really true. But the first time I walked into the cellar when after I was passed, and I think Sarah was my waitress, and she was like, "Hi, Mateo, what would you like?" And I was like, "Why does she know my name?" Like, yeah. just yeah. little things like that that make you just automatically feel connected. And yeah, well, I, comes, I I really miss the cell. I miss everything yeah, Yamanik is saying. I, I me too. I feel the exact same way. It's very hard to not be there. So it's, that that attitude, just so you know, that comes largely from Esty and it comes from my father. Yeah. And it, and it comes from me. And and it's also I can never get used to the fact that um other places don't have the good sense to have that attitude because it's what not, I, mean, uh, it, I mean, a comedy club lives and survives on its relationship with comedians. What else do they have, you know? It just, I, I, it, it's very sincere and it's deep. It goes beyond disagreements and, and whatever. It, and it's disagreements, so the, the disagreements are good. We say it's a family, but it's like true form of family. I want to tell you guys when my father passed and I, I swear to God, probably one of the top three things that was the hardest for me was not going to the cellar and sitting there at the table and being around my friends. It was, I thought about it constantly. Like if I could just be at the cellar at the table with my friends, I would be mourning so much easier. It's, it's literally the, the place I wanted to be. It, and, and it was, yeah. It was and what's better, better to be with your friends and laugh harder than you've ever laughed yeah. you know the with the funniest people you could it's ever very meet. hard to not have the chicken and the chicken and the chicken wings. that's what i was trying yeah. to explain i was i was trying to explain to somebody what it means to be a comedian because they think we show up and do a show and leave and i was like no i'm like it, it when all this happened not just our work was cut off our social life our family 
gone. I mean, because, you know, every day, like Friday night, right? Fridays are my favorite night at the cellar. You look in the morning and say, okay, these are the people I'm hanging out with tonight. I'm hanging out with Yam, Jessica. Oh, Monroe's going to be there. Oh, Chloe's going to be there. Oh, I have a seven show, I have an eight show. Okay, I'm going to do Cafe Wa. All right, I'm going to chat with Esty. I'm going to sing with Noam. I'm going to gossip with Val. I'm going to speak yeah. Italian with Liz. I'm going to gossip with Eric at VU. I'm going to maybe I'll grab a cigarette from somebody. Who run, and then you're running corners. You'll see like Mark Norman. How are they over there? Ah, they suck. Or how are they? Oh, they're great. You know, and you get excited. You go downstairs. Oh, Mike's hosting. Okay, who's on next? How much time? God, Artie's going long again. You know, it's like there's just so much like that is a part of your life, and you're there till four o'clock in the morning. You're sitting there and chatting. We'll, you know, I'll have another piece of pie. We'll do that. We'll do that. And it's just you don't want to go home. You'd like, and then it just becomes so much a part of your life. You go there early because you want to be with people, and it just it sucks that we're not. You know, you know, and it's, you know yes, what it's else? Perfect. You know. You know what else is interesting about it to me, and this, especially since the, the press we've gotten sometimes is so much the opposite, is that uh, it's one of the only places I know that actually has true, organic, uncontrived diversity. You look yeah. at this, look at it, look at who we are. I know. Gay, straight, black, and, and, and we, I believe we actually even forget about it when we're talking. Like this is this is this is who we spend exactly. our lives. With. I do. And you yeah. and you would almost it, it, you would, you would think that that um that first of all that people can't on their own have diverse lives unless unless it's political or something. And one of the things that does happen at the cellar for whatever reason is that um people people it's it's very it's very diverse in a very natural way, which is wonderful. You know, it was, that's that's kind it's of the organic. Dream. It's yeah, I wouldn't the, know any black the, people if not for the seller. Whole, that's the dream for our whole future. That's the only hope for America, really, is that at some point, people will define themselves in terms of their relationships with other humans, and not and not first doesn't mean you forget your 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 groups and whatever it is, but that it, it doesn't become the most important thing in your relationships and in the way you lead your lives. And I think the seller, most for the most of the most of the time, achieves that. You know, and I'm proud of that. Very proud of that. Especially being such a right wing guy as I am. You know. So <laughs> it's true. I I feel that I connect <laughs> or, organically with such a diverse and broad <coughs> amount of people, mm -hmm. you know, and and whether we talk or we joke, like you said before, when Norm is around, it's mostly politics. Then it, it's a goofy stuff with with Matteo and everybody else. <laughs> It just, you're talking about social life. You said you were, uh, no, I'm, that you're depressed. I was like, the last couple of days, I am so fidgety. I, I can't find a place. I can't even tell you why. But I actually do know. It's just like I had enough. Mm -hmm. I had enough. I'm so ready to just, you know. But when I look forward into the future, I am not sure of what I'm going to see. Or what mm -hmm. I'm gonna do. That's you know? that's the problem with and, all of this. Nobody knows and, where it ends or how it begins again. But it, I mean, I've been so busy with work, the way I work, and you know, they thankfully everybody's been texting me. I've been talking. Matteo is checking up on me all the time, and and Jessica, I hear from everybody, but it's not. It's not the same because I can sit at a table and you walk in and say, hi, how are you doing, whatever, and not have any more conversation than that. But yeah. there is still a connection. Mm -hmm. and, you guys don't and, understand. Essie's been working. Essie's been working full time for 50 years. Oh, my God. 50 years. You know, Essie, Essie works, you know, when you guys don't see her, she comes in, does the office and blah, blah, blah. I mean, so talk about a change in lifestyle. Yeah. I mean, you must be going crazy. I am having right now a very hard time, Noam. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm trying. I, I mean, like, you have no idea how much joy I have seeing you guys. Yeah. You know, I, th I think, I'm like, Casella is like, uh, like the new Elaine's, and you have to give tribute to Esty when she's there, just like when Elaine would be at her own restaurant. <laughs> Remember, Noam? Yeah. And just, yeah. I don't yeah, know yeah. how old you guys are, but no, I just, it's, it's, right. We're going to wrap, we're, we're gonna I, wrap it up. I'm doing it. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. Actually, we need to, we need to hear. We need years. to talk to you. That's hard. We, yeah, we need to, to talk to Esty no more. 
because what? people feel isolated during this time. We should definitely have a, you know, a face to face where we can talk, you know, I'll check in with you face to face. Yeah. So I miss sitting next to you. I miss I do too. You know I miss brunch. Over here. Pictures and you phone and you pictures and you cartoons and, and everybody, you know, it just I miss Danny Cohen bow ties. I mean I know. <laughs> By the way, Jessica, you you're you're responsible for bringing Danny Cohen to the cellar. Yes. Je Jessica is, right? Yes. That is the that is such a gift. He is just the best. Amazing. I love that guy. He's, 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 he's been wonderful. my brother for 20 years, and he's oh, been he's so good. A, a my wife's in love with him now. Person. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. Danny's going to do my um, Instagram tomorrow night. He's going to. Um, he's bringing his friend Lucy, so he'll be on my. Oh, Instagram. I love Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Well, when we started this, I thought it would be you know good to do. As many things in life, you, you do them for whatever reason, you think you're doing them and then they turn into something else. And what this has turned into is a really nice way every night for comedians to hang out and bond and everything. And I'm, and I'm really happy that, uh, that Yamanika and Jessica did it. It's the first time you guys have done it, right? Mateo, you've done it before? Yeah, you know, I've done it before, Yamanika did it before too. No, oh, not with me, I wasn't on with Yamanika. No, you weren't on and I had different hair. But yeah, yeah. I wasn't on because great. I wanted to see The hair looks great, Yamanika. It looks really, really it. good. Yeah, I do yeah. like this hair. Thank you. So I wear hats. I, I, I can't do my hair. I, so, you know, we do it every night. And no, we'll do everything to support the club, and it's going to yeah. come back stronger than ever. I swear. I know it. I swear. Oh. I have a very strong feeling about it. Thank Same. you. I really so, 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 tell you guys that you don't you don't need to be invited. We do it every night at eight thirty, and if you're doing nothing, you just want to click on the link. It's the same link every night. Just just come on. Nobody's gonna we'll be That's happy. Awesome, anybody. love it. Thanks. Thank no. you. Um, Thank you, thanks, guys. It's so good to see everyone. Esty, love Bye, you. you guys. I love you. So I help me, uh, white people don't think you can't get it. You can get it too. All right. So everybody, please. <laughs> be, be, yeah. Be I'm not. I'm not worried. <laughs> <laughs> high risk so you better stay home all right good night everybody good night oh, yeah,